Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom right hand corner, we have Grast starting as the red Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Barcode Terran, who I do not know who this is. And this is going to be on, I'm not even sure what the map is. What map is this? Brain farting on this. Uh, this is, oof, this is a, a throwback to, it looks like Ringing Bloom. Anyway, is this from Ladder recently? Anyway, doesn't matter. This is going to be a highlight of Grass in particular, so I'm going to go ahead and do a replay of him. Hoping to see him participate in Season 13 of BSL. I'm not sure where he'll end up in the ladder, but ended up having, on my, in my personal opinion, the best series as far as the most exciting games last season were Grass versus Rancor. He's going to go ahead and open up Pylon. This is, I assume, some high-level Korean. It could be absolutely anybody. People drop the barcodes, and you're never quite sure. It's the between the barcodes and the Ls. And I actually am curious about this. Is there a status among barcodes where it's like the smaller your barcode is? Because if you just have like the four lines with the barcode, does that mean you got early in on the barcode game? Because I know there's like a bajillion different combinations of just doing the straight barcode. But so many people do the barcode thing to hide their identity. Where it's like, okay, what, and at a certain point, if you're trying to make an alt account, how long do you have to like go through all the different barcode combinations to get a barcode that's open? Food for thought. Anyway, also wanted to give a shout out. I'm going to get, so I got my, or it looks like we are seeing a 14 Nexus, by the way, from Grast. I want to give a particular shout out because I'm in a stupendous mood today. Because uh, I got my eight, first A20 silent kill last night. And I'm not sure how delayed this will end up uploading in the future. But want to give the shout outs. I guess the to Moltrap for telling me to slow down amongst other things in play. And of course a huge shout out to Jorbs. If, basically Jorbs is the flash of Slay the Spire. And if you guys have not played the uh, Slay the Spire and you like Starcraft, I highly recommend it. It's definitely one of those games. It's, one of the, it's a card deck building game that has a scaling difficulty. It's kind of a, people call it more of a roguelike. I'm kind of curious what that, I think people, when they say roguelike, they really just mean hard is what essentially what they mean. They're like, oh, this is a challenging game that scales up in difficulty, but it's definitely, definitely one of those games. I really enjoy it. It's been, I would actually put it as one of, more, one of my favorite games. Anyway, Grass gonna scout upper right hand first. It looks like he is gonna get scouted initially by this barcode Terran. He's done the very typical grab two gateways and his assimilator to follow things up. It looks like the barcode Terran, I'm just going to call him barcode instead of barcode Terran. Maybe I'd just call him the Terran. He's gone ahead and moved SCVs off gas, which suggests he's going to go ahead. And here's the thing. When you pull SCVs off gas at that period of time, it become your options to push against this kind of shift. It looks like he's going to go ahead and throw SCV back on gas. So it, so it looks like he's maybe thinking about doing a factory follow-up. Rather than going, the other option is, is to go command center. Looks like he is building that command center behind this. But the other option is, of course, to go command center. Um, and then uh, additional command center immediately to try to just sneak ahead of your Protoss opponent. We are seeing a machine shop plopping down. No Marines being built, though, so it is possible that the Barco Terran, and actually, still, Grast is not scouted. He's actually sending out an initial Zealot. After getting it, looks like that first SCV kill, we also have range being upgraded. First tank being built, and actually, with the timing of all this, and without a front door seal, this uh, there's only a single Marine on the ramp. That Zealot may, yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to walk right up, despite the 12 Nexus, and get some damage done. So one Marine down, first siege tank being built. An SCV pulling back, a probe actually up here as well. And that SCV now in flight, it needs to hide back in that line. First tank out, this Marine attacking the factory for some reason. And we also have a manor pylon blocking at least an SCV in. So Grast, despite going for the very early Nexus, is still managing to get a decent, a decent amount of harassment inside the base and is he gonna go so he's got this probe still pocketed in that back corner SCVs are transferring to this location and he's still being aggressive with this a dragoon and a zealot now moving out as well he's plopping on a third gateway so still applying the pressure there are two siege tanks and there should be two marines by the time this makes way this direction a second manor pylon has been plopped down 
But I like the decision to do this because it's forcing defense forces out to the corner, which is going to allow him to be a little bit more aggressive, potentially on the front door, although two sea shanks and a marine. I don't know that he wants to engage this, particularly walking up the ramp. It looks like he's going to anyway. Should, yeah, a little bit overly aggressive, so he's going to go ahead and back off from this. Two more Dragoons flooding out. However, with that range finishing in not too long, and additional Dragoons starting to be built, as soon as he hits that five Dragoon count, without this front door seal, it is possible. It would be a little bit greedy, and you have to be a bit careful walking up the ramp to do this, because there is that misfire chance. But he can try to be a little bit more aggressive against these siege tanks. We are seeing mines being upgraded. But at the very least, what Grass is doing, <coughs> excuse me, with this, very dry weather here in Southern California, causing me to cough a little bit more than usual. Don't have COVID. I actually got my booster shot last week to lay any concerns. Um, one thing is by building these units and being a little more aggressive on the front and actually kind of camping out near this third base, he's going to delay and slow down that additional base. If he can box out those vultures, oh, those vultures actually sneaking by. So this is the Protected Mineral only. I actually forgot this is... I haven't casted Ringing Bloom in a while. So I thought... I forgot how common it is to go that 14 Nexus on Ringing Bloom since you have that protected expansion. Two mines planted down. It looks like going to provide a little bit of disruption. The robotics facility not being built. Actually, a Stargate. Or sorry, a robotics facility is already built. A Stargate warping in. So this is going to be two base. Very rapid two base. Arbiter? Are we going to see two base Arbiter? Or is he just opting... To maybe even go scout on this. We have several SC a little bit of an over dedication of SCV here. The Terran having a little bit of trouble getting everything set up. He's gonna go ahead and build that third command center. He's only got three tanks on the ground, so I don't know that he necessarily has enough troop to really take it. He also is very low on the factory count to be able to flood out additional vultures or things like that to kind of walk out and keep Grass back. Grass is gonna go ahead and grab his third base though. He's got a decent amount of Dragoons to do so. And he's also going to sneak another expansion at the 12 o'clock base. So he's grabbing two expansions plus teching and just relying on his opponent to play a little bit more defensively, especially going up against that early command center build, and try to play the game from here. We are seeing level one weapons being upgraded. We see that engineering bay being built in the background as well. The first observer going to walk out, and I think this observer is going to be able to catch... Yeah, it's going to be able to catch eyes on that third... A bunker being plopped down to provide some additional defense. But so Grass kind of, and also plopping down a bunch of gateways, playing a little bit risky here, but I don't think he's going to pay for it in any way, shape, or form. It looks like he wants to do a very rapid transition into carriers to try to deal with anything the Terran is going to play. So oftentimes at the 11 minute mark, we'll see if this works out. I think it might though, because usually at this time, so the Terran was trying to play very very economically greedy and stay light on the factories get an early third and let's see if he plops down a bunch of additional factories from here but as a result of this he's going to be a little bit lighter on a on troop count in the mid game and grasp has already hopped ahead to stay in the economic lead by having that one nexus up scan going to go ahead and see a lot of these gateways also going to catch that stargate and never mind so he's going to try the Corsair Disruption web play once again. And we'll see if it play. We saw him attempt this in his matches in BSL. I believe in the semifinal. Three additional factories being plopped down. A starport is there to go ahead and push towards level two weapons. Second armory being pushed. And so it looks like this is going to be kind of that standard 11 minute uh, timing push with level two weapons, level one armor. It is possible... Anything's possible at this level of MR where we might push things. Also, double forge at the 12 o'clock location. Some Dragoons filling in underneath. You do need those Dragoons. So the Dragoons are absolutely necessary, obviously, in this build. Because you're going to try to hit from range. You want to hit hard. And while those tanks are sieging and unseaging inside the disruption web, it's very difficult to execute, though. Because you are. it just requires a lot of APM, is what it comes down to. And you a lot of precision. Char and booster being upgraded. Vulture Speed being upgraded. Second Armory is up just as Level 1 Weapons is finished to go ahead and continue to push those weapon upgrades. Terra not doing 
too bad a job. About even in the supply count, which isn't exactly where you want to be, but we are going to see Grest's supply start rising rapidly because of all of these gateways in the background and because of the Stargates starting to pump these Corsair out. Now, the trick of this, though, is does he get the Corsair out in time with enough energy to deal with the push that's going to be incoming? And I think there was a potentially a little bit, or sorry, I think this is the 11 minute mark that's uh, the level two. I, maybe there's just delay on the Terran as well. One nice thing though, for Grast's part is with this double forge, he might be able to, even without the Corsair help, he might have a decent upgrade timing where he's not just gonna get run over. And he's he also has that economic lead. So he's kind of playing, it's like almost like halfway playing gateway man. Pretty well saturated. It looks like the Dragoon's going to try to trail those Vultures. The Vultures sneaking out, trying to find out what they can. The Corsair count starting to grow here in the corner. I also don't know what the, as far as this build goes, because this is not a standard build any, in any way, shape, or form. I'm, I'm curious what the optimal Corsair count is to lay down constant D-Web. Citadel of Adun is building Zelt Leg Speed. The other nice thing is if you can kind of push your opponent back, drop some D-Web, let... Because one thing with the Zealots is it can be difficult to get Zealots in position to where they can do the massive amount of damage that you want them to do. I believe the Terran has spotted this. He's going to go ahead and upgrade EMP with his Science Vessels to go ahead and counter this, and that's going to make it even more difficult for Grast to execute this build. Vultures have done a pretty good job mining. It looks like they are going to catch a probe before it's able to drop a fifth base at that three o'clock location. Grass initially thinking about splitting this attack force, but instead still grouping up towards the middle. And I like what the Terran is doing here. He's kind of boxing himself in. He wants to, at this stage, I think he's thinking, you know what? If you're gonna go for this fancy tech and whatnot, what I'm going to do is just slow down your additional expansions and push to 200 supply, I believe. I could be wrong and he might move out with this level two weapons and level one armor upgrade but i think the way he is shelling up this is more of an indicator that he and he is building like the standard units but i think he's thinking no let me just go for no i take it back he's gonna do he's gonna push it back uh he is gonna go for the attack with that level two weapons level one armor grass starting to regather so he's got looks like seven corsair with a decent amount of energy the observers are seeing they should see this army pushing out and moving forward. There are science vessels to go ahead and see those observers. I don't see any Goliaths with this grouping. It is just pure vulture and pure tank thus far. Never mind, two Goliaths that were just hidden amongst all the green towards the front. It's almost camouflage with this. This is the moment of truth. Grast has, it looks like, just about two control groups of Dragoons. He's going to have to rely heavily. On the D-Web. Siege tanks grouping up. Graf's cycling around. He's going to have to dodge some EMP to be sure to land this. Moving back even further. Looks like the Barco Terran a little bit wary, potentially, of those D-Webs. Is only siege tanking a little bit at a time. Now he's turning around, re-engaging the D-Webs, diving in, catching a lot of those siege tanks. One defense matrix on the front door. D-Web dropping on the back line of tanks, which is allowing these Zealots to continue to press forward. And the Dragoon Wall diving in, these tanks remaining silent. That's ba This is basically like a pseudo-stasis and grass peeling forward through the rest of this army. Unfortunately, not able to get as much damage as he wanted to as rapidly, so he's still getting pushed back. About even supply, which is not where you want to be as a Protoss. You want to be 10 to 15 supply ahead. But considering the Dragoon count, considering everything else, you can see where the Corsair has potentially made a difference. It looks like that 9 o'clock base comfortably being taken now by this Terran. And Grass potentially in a bit of trouble because he it's not that, not that far a hop, a jump, to go ahead and press into this third base and to essentially have grass contained. Still has a good amount of Corsairs out in the field. A bunch of Zealots filling in this group. The Vulture's trying to press forward and get something done. Looking for the time. And the Siege Tank's dropping. No EMP or anything else. The Corsair's moving ahead. Some D-Web's being dropped. The Zealot's able to get on top 
of the siege tanks, some of them getting distracted and getting dragged into mines up above. This time, this engaging, engagement going much more positively for Grast. It looks like these Goliaths are going to get taken out. The Zealot's able to get on top of everything else, so he's going to be able to clear out this army. Some reinforcements moving forward. But here's the thing. The Terran had dropped everything on this contain, pushed absolutely everything forward. <coughs> so he's only got these two siege tanks to defend. Ooh, a battle probe coming off the line, burying minerals. I'm not sure if this is like a stop the fighting. I think he was getting in the Dragoon's way. It's like, no, I do like the supply depot out front providing some additional disruption. Grass grabbing that three o'clock base while all this is going on, but there's still a skeleton crew here. Grass has opened things up a little bit. Vulture able to sneak in before any cannons are plopped down. It's going to make things more difficult for Grast overall. But the Terrans still wanting to go ahead and tighten this noose. This science vessel is getting pushed back. Defensive Matrix trying to drop an EMP or something else. More reinforcements pushing forward. A lot of Goliaths to take out the Corsairs overhead. It looks like they are going to get wiped out now. Level 2 weapons has come online with level 2 armor for Grass, but it does not look like pound for pound. He's just fielding as many units in this fight. Some zealots are come as I say that, zealots are moving in to reinforce. And you can see the continued flood of blue, or I guess teal, moving across the map. And it is a ferocious fight across the 6 o'clock position. Grass needs to hold this, because if he does not, he's going to end up in a lot of trouble. And this stalwart vulture still pounding away at that 3 o'clock location. That 9 o'clock base is up and running. Grast has a pretty good view of map control. The Terran doing a pretty good job macroing. Grast is now a little bit ahead in supply. Man, this this shows you how little damage vultures do to buildings, though. He's been working this entire time. That pylon's still building, and Grast's still ignoring it. Arbiter is now being fielded. But the Terran, looking not that far from that back corner, looks like he might want to make another attempt. at sealing that front door. Grass positioning with a, a lot of zealots. He still has two Corsair overhead. He does have an Arbiter out in the field to group. Some SCVs transferring, and the Terran slowly pressing out towards that third base. A additional defense matrix being dropped on the front door. It looks like they are going to catch a Dragoon. The zealots and the Dragoons careening in from the north. The siege tanks at the far position, so it looks like they're going to be able to do a lot of damage, plus a lot of doodads, but a nice defensive matrix catching those initial three siege tanks, but the Goliaths and Vultures doing significant amounts of damage to these Dragoons before they're able to get on top of the siege tanks, but the reinforcements now peeling in. And it looks like they are going to be able to clear out what is left, but more reinforcements pushing up from the Terran to go ahead and reseal this front door, Grast. Still clinging on for, for dear life. It looks like that 3 o'clock base, the vulture was cleared out. Grass trying to open up his front door, which is all that firing in the background. A bunch of gateways down for him. Carriers are now surfacing on the field, which is going to mean, and this might be just what he needs to protect this third base. A single Dragoon trying to buy some time. A pocket of forces. Here's the thing when you transition... To carriers, there's just not a lot. They're so expensive, you end up with fewer units. He's trying to bulk into the corner. The Arbiter moving forward is a, a recall. I thought that was just a distraction, but recalling on that back line of tanks. Also trying to deal with the vultures. It looks like some mine drags happening. Not sure if that was intentional mine drags or not. More siege tanks grouping up. This third base still under assault. The Arbiter sitting above the probes to try to keep them alive. <clears throat> I was not expecting the recall, I will admit. But the siege tanks are starting to get within Nexus range. And it is a hop, skip, and a jump from there to sealing things in. However, the Terran, I don't know that he realized that there's also a carrier shift in the midst of this, and the carrier count is growing. So it is a race against time for Grast against the Terran as he continues to press forward. The Terran continue to sneak things out. The Terran, however, his main is mined out. His natural expansion uh, is mined out. Natural expansion there. SCV's idle there. He's basically at two base. Grast is 
Still, his main is still there. His natural expansion is going to be mined out momentarily. So it's going to be three base versus two base. Still in a good position. The carrier is starting to join the fleet. Might be able to push things out from here. And there's a critical piece here. Kind of the question is, is does the Terran know about this 12 o'clock base? Did he keep that in his calculations? I don't know that he commsat at it. It looks like vultures are moving up to this location now. If nothing else, he scouted. He's also going to see that probe move that location. It looks like the Terran going to go ahead and back off from the contain. So it looks like the carrier is saving the day. Some high... This is just units. It's like the entire tech tree out of nowhere. Grass losing units to the 12 o'clock. One problem with taking expansions like this is it becomes very difficult to defend them over the large distances. He's trying to move units up there, including... This is going to be... He needs to be careful, though, because that leaves these High Templar very exposed to potential run-bys. Grassed ahead, 40 supply, doing a good job macroing here. But still might end up losing a base. The thing for the Terran on the opposite side is what additional base does he take? Some Vultures and Siege Tanks sneaking underneath, trying to engage this 3 o'clock base and shut down Grass's economy. As well, it looks like the carriers are there to go ahead and deal with that siege tank. The rest of the vultures finally being cleared out. And both players kind of taking a moment to breathe after a ferocious attack around the 6 o'clock location. It looks like several science vessels being fielded. A good amount of Goliaths. And I got a feel for the Terran right here. It's like, what do you build against this? Grast has been fielding absolutely every single unit, it feels like, except for scouts. In the Protoss arsenal. So what can you expect? It looks like a nice EMP dropping that Arbiter. There are a large amount of carriers in this backfield. Level 3 weapons, level 3 armor online for the Terran. However, level 3 weapons, level 3 armor there for Grass. No shield upgrades as of yet. And the Terran again pushing out slowly. Grass trying to engage from the north. At an oblique angle, EMP dropping across a lot of those carriers. The carriers trying to engage the siege tanks, the Goliaths, right on top of them. And I'm looking for the Psy Storm underneath to try to equalize this. But it looks like either they were EMP'd or there just wasn't enough energy with those High Templar. And as a result, this Terran continuing to push in. There's some Psy Storm finally to clear out a handful of the Goliaths. Grass still holding position, but there are enough Goliaths where the positioning of this looks like they're keeping that interceptor, and with that level 3 weapons, you can see where they're just keeping that, those interceptor accounts low, which is making those carriers even less effective. The Goliaths backing up to that siege tank line. Grass with a desperate hold, just a handful of siege tanks. Some high Templar trying to defend against the Terran pushing, and the Terran doing so with the Mostly going to try to rely on reinforcements, it looks like. The carrier is starting to push, and they need to pick off those siege tanks. Great side storm over the science vessels and a handful of the Goliaths, but more reinforcements pushing in those... those oof, with the EMP, those Dragoons just absolutely melting. And it looks like this is enough Goliaths where these interceptors are getting picked off in rapid numbers. And look for more reinforcements to start peeling out. Some Dark Templar now out in the field. There are science vessels still here on location to deal with this. Tanks re-sieging. But with the Goliaths distracted by those interceptors overhead, the Dark Templar do a lot of damage. And another... Oh, a Psy Storm to the north. It looks like these carriers are able to clean up between that and the Dark Templar. That's actually an interesting combination I never thought of before. Having the Dark Templar underneath with the distracted Goliaths. And it looks like Grast is going to be able to push this back. And that might be it for the Terran. Simply because he is running out of minerals. He's just now established another base in the upper left-hand corner. Grast is still mining at that 12 o'clock location. He's mining at the 3 as well. Minerals are looking thin for both players. Grast still 50 supply ahead. And Grast, realizing that this might turn into a longer economic starvation game, is going to go ahead and grab that Nexus in that upper right-hand corner. The carrier fleet still standing. Six carriers out. Grass looking to hunt out in the field, maybe do some damage. Nothing but Goliaths fielded currently for the Terran, which is going to 
We'll see if there's a, a quick switch for Grast. These gateways mostly silent because he is hurting for minerals. Both players playing rather thin, which means they need to get favorable exchanges. And this Vulture able to get on top of these probes. However, some Zealots and Dragoons able to get in this upper left-hand corner. And this is a critical base for this Terran to hold. He needs to hold this and keep that economy alive. The SCV's fleeing, drawing some Zealots out. They're going to go ahead and retreat to the 9 o'clock location. But while that's happening, the Terran diving in with the rest of the Goliaths to the 9 o'clock location. That, that base was unpowered. The upper right-hand corner, it looks like the Vulture has snuck him in there. Some SC, Already six probes killed. And that Vulture already has six kills and running. Maybe the probes can turn around and defend themselves. Battle probes to action. The carrier is diving into the 9 o'clock location. So the upper left-hand base looks like it's going to get taken out by just a skeleton crew. While the carriers are taking out the 9 o'clock base, the Terran is no longer mining or is shortly no longer going to be mining because there's only this interior base here. But the Terran looking for... Oh, a huge side storm on the front! Over those siege tanks and those Goliaths, as the Terran trying to push in, some more carriers fielding out. Was that a recall to get them back? And there's GG, the Terran calling it after that Psy Storm, realizing he wasn't able to push in. He was no longer mining. Grast still had two bases operational. A fun one. Look for Grast, hopefully, in this upcoming season of BSL 13. Thank you for getting me this replay, by the way. And I hope to see him in the higher rounds. In particular, I would love to see a rematch between him and Rancor because that was a great series. But this was a fun one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.